The sun has come out, and it's not tomorrow, so that's a good thing. Um, I just uh, wanted to uh, introduce this guy here, and uh, first off, my name's uh, Tony Alonso. I've uh, had the privilege of uh, writing uh, a book, two books actually, uh, one of them though it, uh, that is here today for sale called Mustang Bullet Generations, and it's about the all three feature cars that Ford made in tribute to the Mustang that was in the movie Bullet. And the guy sitting next to me, uh, it was a part of his life for 40 something years. And like any good Ford Mustang story, there's lots of little threads and connections and uh, interesting things that uh, hopefully we'll cover a few of those things today. So. Without further ado, uh, please give Mr. Sean Kiernan a big warm welcome. Thank you. So, Sean, <clears throat> Tony, I, you know, I'm uh, really glad that uh, you're a Mustang guy. Uh, and you, you had a, a pretty famous Mustang, but you've had other Mustangs along the way, haven't you? Yeah, uh, yeah. I wasn't able to tell anybody I was a Mustang guy until January 18. But um, <laughs> and I think I've made up for it since then, just being able to basically puke all my Mustang knowledge <laughs> all over everyone for the past, you know, my whole life. And uh, yeah, there's always been a Mustang in the garage, and there's still a Mustang in the garage, and there's well, actually there's two Mustangs in the garage now. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it's. Uh, how can you be a Mustang guy without telling anybody you're a Mustang guy, you know? And um, it was fun for me to to go all to the shows and the cars and coffee and everything. I've got a 14 California Special and, and to see all the bullets there. And uh, not being able to say anything was, was, was kind of tough. But yeah, it, it uh, and even the um, last day that I got to spend with my father. He was in his 08 and I was in my 14 and uh, I tracked it that day. And um, yeah, the next, next day he passed away, so. Well, we're again, really glad that you're here. Sorry, I'm kicking a little feedback out. But um, we're Jeff. we'll have the sound guy in Back here. Down. I'm sure he'll help. Yeah, whatever you touched. There you go. There you go, he took it down, took that gain down. Uh, you, uh, you actually, I know you sold, you sold one Mustang, you sold another one, didn't you? I did, I sold two Mustangs, so I bought a Mustang before I sold Bullet, uh, the day before, and, uh, then I sold it yesterday. It's here in a trailer, and, um, so Paul, uh, Rocha, who's a good friend, he's the guy with the Mohawk, um, I bought his baby the day before my baby was sold, and, uh, now, Two years later, I sold it back to him. So it's been basically sitting in the spot in the garage where Bullet was for the past two years. That's been been keeping it warm. But it's a 16 GT 350R, and uh, has been tracked since day one, I would say. Uh, but it is the uh, it's the Canadian R with the kilometers and everything's you know. So and the lights stay on nonstop because of daytime you know up there. That, that messed safety. you up. That messed you up, didn't it? Seeing KM, you know. Yeah, it really did. But you know, it was a nod to Paul every time. So, <laughs> well, I have to say, uh, you know, at, at least you made up for the sale of your car uh, back then in 2020. A little bit, right? Um, but you know, I think folks are certainly going to want to hear a little more about that. And uh, um, you have so many stories, and I, I tried to really think like, what, what would, what would I want to know from Sean now, mm. two years later, right? Well, I'd kind of want to know a little bit about what it was like for you the meaning of that car to you all through that time yeah. up to the point that you made the decision that you were going to sell it. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, obviously it was a mental journey uh, to, to be able to go through with that. I mean, when I came out with it or out of the garage and, and thinking it through, I knew 2018 I wasn't going to think about selling it at all. That was, that was in my head. My goal was to get out and to show it to as many people as I could. Um, everywhere and uh, 
And then at the end of the year, I'd sit down, I'd go home, you know, for Christmas, and the car would be in a museum, and it was, and I flew back to Tacoma, and I sat in a chair, and I stared at the car, and said, can I do it? Can I sell it? And can I be okay with it? And it's not even me asking that question. It's more my wife and my mom going, look, we're not going to deal with you every day saying I regret selling the car <laughs> or you being depressed and sad or whatever. You know, it's, it was more for them. Because me, you know, when I first was sitting in the car, you know, on, on, in January <clears throat> and under the, the deck before I pulled out, I sat in the car for an hour um, under the where all the cameras were and I was by myself in the dark in the car and man that moment you know I mean the car smelled like it was when I was five and you know I, my father and all the memories were rushing back but by the time the end of the year I felt like I had done what I had set out to do and you know that was probably the biggest part of it and I knew that I wanted to the final goal, obviously, you know, we all want to leave legacies and we all want to, you know, do the best for our family and, and provide and all of that. And obviously, Bullet provided, um, and that was what my father wanted. But it was never to take us away from the home, away from the farm, and, and uh, you know, continue to, to show it. But the thing is, at the end of the day, the car, I still have a you know, two car garage. I, I don't have this eclectic collection or anything. I mean, it's just still the two car garage. And uh, the car doesn't need to be touched. You know, it doesn't need, it needs to be preserved. And now it is, it's being, you know, it's got some body that I can't say is looking after it and it's in an air conditioned and heated facility. And, uh, you know, it's, she's taken care of, and that's what it needed. It needed somebody with a team, and I don't have it. All my team are little girls, and I, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what I live for. So I don't regret it. Um, I am emotionally okay with it. I do think about it every day. Um, but I don't think about selling it. I think about the journey, and, because in the moment, you don't get to appreciate it. Um, I mean, I did everything from... Gosh, a burnout on Golden Gate Bridge to running up the festival of speed uh, at Goodwood to the, being the poster child for Woodward Dream Cruise in 18. And I mean, just so much stuff, you know? And I think about that part and everybody that I've met along the way uh, more than I do actually selling the car. Um, you know, just because being able to sell it, go home, and even though the pandemic started, gosh, not even 40 days after I sold it. Um, it really put me in a position to appreciate my girls and be there every day with them. And God, I couldn't think of another way of the way it shook out is the way it was supposed to be. And, you know, am I in charge of all that? I don't know. Things keep just happening the way they're supposed to happen. And it, it's always been that way with that that car and it, it's still it's not stopping and there's so much going forward and the car is going to still do so yeah it's it's a uh, gosh an emotional battle um for for a long time but it was it was easy at the end of the day for me yeah. and the good thing is, is that 2019 you know the, i didn't actually say that i was going to sell the car until mid-year but i knew in january that i was going do it. And um, at that point, I didn't even decide who I was going to sell it through or how I was going to do it because that, that's an old other emotional battle. Oh, yeah. Is who's going to let you, you know, how, right. how are you going to cross that path? Right, and, because if you'd said, uh, you know, like to me, hey, I want to sell it to you, yeah, uh, yeah. I would have offered you maybe. Maybe like fifty thousand for it, maybe. Right, right. You know, like, oh, that's a special car. Fifty, fifty thousand. Could you? Well, I got the original lug nuts at the house. I'll sell those to you for fifty grand. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Got you the Sean. original tires. <laughs> Thank you. You know, hey, I still got some stuff. Okay. I'll get you fifty grand worth. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you. I have to talk to you later. But yeah, that was the, that was the big thing because I wanted it to be done the way I wanted to do it. You know, I, yeah. I didn't want to uh, put it on bring a trailer or eBay yeah, bring or a tra eBay. You know, and be like, yeah. hey, <laughs> here, 
here's this, and, and I just, you know, I wanted to do it in a grand way, and there's so many people out there that were willing to do it, um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it was all about family, and that's the way Meekum rolls also, is, is very much uh, close to home and, and family. So here you are, part of the Mustang family. We're all part of the Mustang family here. And to get to that point, you know, one of the things that I thought was so cool was there's another guy in this room who's involved in your journey, who I think he's going to be saying a few words. I don't know. There's like four guys in here. There's, four, there's a couple guys in yeah. here, but there's one guy in here in particular. John? His name is John. Oh, John yeah. Clore from Ford Performance. He's like that guy in the corner. Yeah, yeah, no, John Clore. I he, know. Uh, he was one of the first guys to sit in my car. That's not. That doesn't have a last name Kieran. Um, he, he uh, him and Kevin Marty, violated the driver's seat. Uh, <laughs> gosh, that was 2016. Yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah. ridiculous. That was six years ago. Um, because it feels like it was yesterday, and uh, but at the same time, it feels like it was 40 years ago, so I don't know. But uh, John is uh, one of the few people I'll hug no matter when I see him. And I, I don't say that to a lot of people, but uh, he, yeah. he uh, <laughs> I, I always have to tell this story about John, no matter where I am or how it is. So the first time I meet John, John was scared to death to meet me, I think because he didn't believe me. And why would you? I mean, I'm, I think there was 100 people who said they owned the original car. And um, I think that still happens, uh, but it's more with 558, um, which 100 people could, because I know five do. But um, so John Clore, Kevin Marty. Kevin, you know, is obviously, uh, I call it, he's the godfather of this whole thing. Um, John is, I don't want to say he's the, the uncle. Like the, the, the <laughs> uncle that you love. And the, yeah, he's that guy. But I will never forget, and I told this to, to everyone. So I spend you know a couple hours with John. I tell him my story, and then I show him the car. Kevin's crying, and John's looking at it, and he's like, I can't believe this. And the whole time, we're all giddy. And this is the first time I'm showing anybody that has a Ford emblem on their shirt yeah. my car. And John comes up to me and just looks me in the eyes and hugs me and says, I am so glad you're not an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> John, you know, uh, you could have maybe phrased it a little more. And I will never forget that for okay. the rest of my life. Right. Because well, that's the gauge yeah. of how things are. Because you never know, you know, somebody that owns this car. Everybody that their perception was that my father didn't want anybody to anything, you know, and that my dad was just keeping everyone from this car. And that's not the way it was. It yeah. was more of we wanted to do it on our terms and our way and the right way and not do it on everybody else's terms. So that, I think, was the start of a beautiful uh, friendship. Uh, well, it's uh, rather amazing that. Uh, it occurred the way that it did, yeah. and it was rather amazing that Ford was getting ready to release a new Mustang Bullet. And yeah, that was the next next thing was to uh, delay everything. So yeah, and um, yeah, delay everything. Ford, I love Ford to death. Ford is family. My uh, my wife's family has worked for Ford for 60 years. They're all funny enough. I met my wife. She had an 09 Mustang. Was born in Dearborn, Michigan. I had Bullet in the garage, yeah. and her father is nuts, and he's he's an electrician for Ford for 50 years, and I had Bullet in the garage, and I had to tell him it was a Camaro with the cover on it, and I was, it was like, don't even go in. And he still, to the day, at any car with a cover at my house, he goes I'm, and looks under the cover. And God, yeah, God he, love him. But when we went to Ford, I had Mike Berardi, who, if, if no one knows, is the Mustang man. I mean, yeah. this guy almost owns one of every year. One of every one year. Of, one yeah. of multiple. But if anybody's ever in Michigan, uh, Dearborn, well, Eastern Troy, right? But that's his place and the most nice, one of the nicest men on the planet that was in a position at Ford as a director of service global. 
I mean, the guy yeah. moved mountains. So here I am in 2016, walking in in Dearborn and Ford. I'm scared to death that I was going to see Sam's dad because he, he, he's had access to the whole place. He's an electrician. So if there's a light out, no matter where it's at, in the president's office or in the rotund back on the other side where the uh, design studio, it doesn't matter. He had access to everything. Yeah. So they snuck me in. And, I mean, we're talking like seven or eight of her family, her aunt, her uncles, all of them. And I'm walking down the halls, like, looking, <laughs> just making sure. You know? I've got this Mike Berardi, Mark Schaller, and, and uh, Dan Jones, and everybody's there. We go in, and it's probably <laughs> the worst meeting room they had because it was way off in the back, and there's like a fold up table. I mean, it was horrible. And uh, but Carl Whitman was there. It was Mark shows the whole Mustang team, and it was basically sitting across the table. And you know, I mean, Carl had the pony logo on his lapel. I mean, he's that guy, right? And I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. He's like, "Well, I've got something to tell you, and and we want to know what you have to tell us." And so I had to spill the beans first. And then this is in uh, gosh, summer of '16, and he goes. We're building a bullet, but we weren't really sure. And at the time, now I can say this, he goes, we've got three cars we're going to build. One's going to be a bullet, one's going to be a Mach 1, and one's going to be a GT500. And I couldn't tell anybody that until the actual Mach 1 came out. But we're going to do bullet first. At the end of the meeting, he goes, we're going to do bullet first, and we're going to honor your father by doing this, and we're going to announce at the same time. And first, it's going to be at the LA Auto Show at the end of uh, 2017. And then, like everything with Ford, it got delayed just a little. And then, <laughs> at the last minute, we decided to do it in Cobra Hall, which was amazing because Sam's family got to come. And we got to do the two shows on the Saturday. And uh, I still don't understand how thousands of Ford employees kept their mouth shut for 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, I know. What's funny is, I'll tell you, is so I actually, for the first time ever, told John, who's Sam's dad, uh, that Saturday, the day before. And the reason is he would accidentally tell the world, Sean owns the bullet, don't tell anybody. <laughs> and this is 24 hours before I actually unveil to the media. So I bought him... Season three through six of Top Gear and said, go home and watch all of them. <laughs> and that's what he did. And it's just that's what he did. I said, don't call anybody. Don't do it. Go home, watch this, and come back tomorrow at 12 o'clock. <laughs> and so they gave him access to everything. And he, he, I'm telling you, we had two guys, and that was their job when John got there, was to make sure they just stared at him. And just, he didn't go anywhere or call anyone or do anything. Because I swear, I'm so thought he was going to be the guy that was going to leave it. <laughs> because, I mean, they had Ford had a team of people up there on a back row and laptops making sure that no one accidentally told or anything was leaking because, yeah, they were dropping hints that the 19 was coming. And the reason they did is every time somebody thought that my car was there, the Chicago photo would pop yeah. up, right? Yeah. That when that happened or when the rock leaked it, you know, the, yep. the wheels in the background, everybody saw that and caught that. That was when I got caught. And people thought that, you know, hey, the original coming out. So every time that somebody thought the original was going to get caught, that's when they dropped a, a leaked photo of the new one. So any time that Ford leaks a photo now, I think it's on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> no one's up. Oh, man. That's... Uh, just if you are a bullet fan, you know this is this is gravy hearing this kind of stuff. But even if you're not, I mean, I find it just so amazing that there are so many stories like this of, of so and so no so and so and something happens because of that. You know, John, because of your contributions, your connections, your association with Kevin and and then how you work within the Ford organization and Mike Berardi picks it up and you know to the outside it's like boy you guys are marketing genius and this is kind of like oh you got really freaking lucky didn't you <laughs> through this whole thing well, yeah I'll tell you the biggest thing 
and so it was five of us, and Mike only had one key card, and it was five of us walking in the building, and we're trying to be quiet and set off the fire alarm. Because <laughs> Oops. Because I walked in the out, and so he had to go in and open it up, and I'm trying to be quiet, and the fire alarm went off. And I'm talking like fire, like fire alarm, fire alarm. Oh, boy. Oops. So here you are, that the car gets introduced. Uh, how many bullet owners are here in this room at this moment? Raise your hands. Oh, look at that. I have a bullet. Uh, and you have a bullet. You still have a bullet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you have a have number two. Number two of yep. the 2019 model year. Uh, She's cracked 7,000 miles. Oh, wow. Hey, so you not... I drive the crap out of that. Okay, car. good. Oh, good. Very good. Um, you know, we, uh, when this happened, after this happened, that really brought out a lot of interest and enthusiasm around the, the Bullet Mustangs because I can remember back in 2001 when the first one came out, um, people, some people didn't really understand what it was about. Some people, uh, Steve McQueen, or, you know, okay, well, that's that guy from that old movie. And, uh, and then Ford made another one in 08, 09, and then they made this one in the 50th anniversary, and all of those things all came together, and all of us who were Mustang bullet enthusiasts were just like, it's just like, we got our time in the sun now, thank you, thank you for all of this stuff to happen. And then you went on. Well, yeah, for tour. me it was totally different. Yes, I, so yeah. So what o, was that like yeah. for you? So when the L1 came out, we found out, I guess, in 2000 or whatever, that they were going to make a commemorative edition. Scared the crap out of all of us because, uh, well, me and my father, um, because the car was just in the garage. Yeah. It wasn't in like a secured vault or whatever. It was just in the garage. It wasn't in a barn. I know a lot of people thought, you know car was just in a barn. It was in a barn for like six months, but it was a new barn. It wasn't in a barn its whole life. It wasn't, you know, cow, cow, bullet, cow. I mean, it was, it was a, it was a car garage. It was a nice, nice place. And, uh, but the problem is, is that, you know, our garage doors stay open all the time because, you know, we live way off the road. But the UPS guy could be a Mustang fan. And you look at the back of the car and you kind of put two and two together and you're going, okay, there's camera mounts, so that's a nice car. And then, and they get a little nosy or whatever. So when the L1 came out, people started to be aware, which is also the time the internet was born, kind yep. of coming to life, and yep. that was also a problem. So I don't associate, you know, I, at the time I really wasn't trying to associate Bullet in my life yeah. um, with them coming out, but it just so happened that in 2001 I had my first daughter, in 2008 I had my second daughter, Yep. 2019, I had my third daughter. Yep. 2020, I had my fourth daughter. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, in 2028, when the 60th anniversary uh, bullet uh, comes up. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that'll be a grand. Okay. <laughs> We're good. I'll, I'll give it off. Okay, yeah. Okay. But yeah, it, it, it's uh, every time, you know, so 2008, well, 2001 is when we started to take the car and go, okay, what are we going to do with it? Well, how are we going to restore it without restoring it? Because it was never the goal to actually, you know, restore it. Because otherwise, it would just look like another bullet. And that's even funny today, because people ask me, "Is the new owner going to restore it?" If he does, you'll never know who got it. Because when he brings it out, he won't be able to prove that's the yeah. original car because it doesn't yeah. look anything like it did. Right. So we always wanted to hold the nostalgia of it, what it was, what it is, and. That was a big problem for us because I had a full-time job. My dad had just retired, but he had Parkinson's, and he was just good at taking stuff apart. He wasn't yeah. really good at oh. anything else. <laughs> so the problem was is that I would go to work, I'd come home, and another piece of the bullet would be missing. And the other thing <laughs> is is we had a green Porsche that I think my dad pushed more than he drove. Took it apart at the same time, same color, and uh, except German. So. All those parts were together when I go to put the car back together, and it's still all apart, the Porsche is, because, you know, I'm not ready for that. But the uh, problem is every time that Ford came out with something, is that we pulled the motor in 08, but then things were, start, you know, who do you get to work on the motor, he, you know, or look at the car. So nobody could actually, I couldn't take it to a body shop and say, yeah. You know, we're looking at this. Thank God I worked. You know, that's that was my profession. Yeah. But yeah, it was uh, as as the Mustang owners were rejoicing, I was scared to death. Yeah. And the reason, you, know, you just you never know who's going to show up. 
and you know, there's people reaching out. Gosh, I would say there for a while in 08, 09, 10, there was somebody reaching out every month because um, there was a handful of people that knew my dad had it. Uh, and the reason was because of Brad Bowling. Yep. Um, when he when he wrote that article, um, he had the information. But then the uh, transportation guy at uh, whatever it was for Charlie's Angels. So Drew Barrymore wanted to drive the car in Charlie in the original Charlie's Angels instead of the pace car. And um, that guy is the one that gave my number out to everyone. And um, and actually, he's one of the first guys that called me when I unveiled, and he got a hold of me through the Historic Vehicle Association, mm -hmm. and he called me and apologized. Mm. And uh, he ended up writing a letter to my mother saying wow. he was so sorry because they tried so hard that my dad ended up having to get legal action towards Columbia Pictures to, yeah. to cease and desist yeah. because they had people showing up at the house. Yeah. And the car was in no shape to go anywhere. It looked the same as it did when I pulled it out, but it was a death trap. I mean, the car hadn't ran since 1980. Yeah. So we weren't about to let Drew Barrymore take, you know, they're like, <laughs> yeah. we'll, restore, we'll restore, we'll bring it out to California. We're going to get the top people to restore the car. You won't have to do a thing. And then we'll bring it back to you in a couple of months and it'll be perfect and it'll have more history. Can you imagine what would come back? I mean, I can't yeah. even. Yeah. So my dad, like, he always did, said, no, thank you, we're good, we'll take care of it on our side. But that was what was constantly happening. So, yeah, we had to be quiet about it, and we were just extremely nervous that somebody was just going to show up, and, you know, you never know. Well, little, little did you know, the legion of fans we're building with every model release, and, and here you are uh, today. Um, and I was thinking, especially... Uh, you know, we've got a few bullets out here up in the front and then we've got some uh, out in the, the field too that uh, every one of us who has a bullet story just like anyone who has a mustang story right john everyone has a mustang story uh they they love to talk about what it means and how it came into their family and what they're going to do with it and all of that and you've had a very public now hmm. story of what a car a mustang has done for you and i think about that here sitting in gail halderman museum gosh gail halderman sketched the thing which started this whole crazy kick and caboodle and i know uh i loved reading in the mustang by design book about what gail said about the fast back shape because that's what we think about often, uh, you know, with bullet, that fastback line, and uh, all those things all connected together, and all these people that all connect together, and you know, again, you're here with a very public, you know, Mustang and story about it, and I just uh, just find it very, very fascinating. So I have to ask you this though. Um, hold that over here so you can read it. Yeah, I, yeah. Let me, uh, yeah, let me get that. Uh, you know, you, you. I know you can't say anything about nope. the. Yep. Okay. The new, the current owner, but. Uh, it's a guy. Okay. Uh, I was thinking of a, like twenty questions. I was going to twenty questions. He has you know. a mother. Is it still okay? Yeah. It's a guy. It's a mother. That's two. Uh, does the car exist in the United States of America? Yes. Okay. Uh, you also said it was in a heated and cool place, and it was someone who now was taking it on, and, and it's going to be preserved, yes. which is something. Yep. Because uh, yeah, so I actually, um, and I guess I can just close. I don't even know. I had a rider that went with the car. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's all part of the deal, no matter who got it. I, I had meetings with everyone before they bid. Mm -hmm. um, that was just part of it. And uh, the restoration thing is big, but the uh, the big one, and, and I don't really, I guess it, that's final. Um, I have the first right of refusal to buy it back. Ah, so. Okay. Ooh, now I gotta save a little more. I can come back to you, Sean. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I can come back to you now. <clears throat> but I gotta ask yeah. a little more. Uh, that day, I, I wanna touch just one moment on that day in Kissimmee 
in 2020, where you know, if you were a Mustang fan, you, you knew about that auction. You were probably watching it. Some of us were there. We, we were, uh, a group of us uh, were, were fortunate enough to be there because uh, we've got some folks who uh, organize uh, bullet events mm-hmm. uh, and, and a lot of Mustang bullet people Paul show up. It. Yeah, so Paul, the guy with the Mohawk uh, back there, one of, our, uh, uh, one of our big, big, big supporters and helps. And uh, we were sitting there, we remember that day, and we were all, everybody was just jazzed up. So what was it like for you that day? I just wanna take you back to that room, to, you know, that room which had 10, what, 17,000 people, you said? In that room, boy, I remember watching the green lights coming down and, the, and now the, you know, whatever, how the announcer was, was covering it. What was it? Tell me about that last walk for you, going up to this big milestone day in your Mustang life. Look, I, I, I mean, people that know me know that I don't, whatever, for fame or whatever. <laughs> I was worried the car was gonna run out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> there is well, that's legit, that's legit. I that's mean, legit. I, cause yeah. I, had it, I hadn't filled it since Somerset. I hadn't put gas in it since oh. Somerset, so I did Somerset, Virginia. I did like four events. Uh, I did Chicago and then ended up there. And uh, man, and, and it was funny. Nobody, we were, we were, I was praying that it was going to fire up. Before. <laughs> it had enough fuel in the lines to get through. And I did, uh, when, after the auction had ended and I left, and uh, there weren't people around, but I went around the back to get back to the glass case. And I absolutely hammered on it because why not? I just sold it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sold not it. my car now. So, <laughs> I, 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 so it's me and, uh, me and my wife, uh, Sam, and I, I'm telling you, I, I hammered on it. And she hicked up right before I got Uh-oh. back to the last case. I was like, man, this is talking about perfect, but I don't care because it's not my car anymore. But anyway, uh, that day, I don't know, you know, mentally you block it out because you don't want to make it bigger than it could be. Yeah. And that was the same thing with the money because that's everybody was just asking me, what do you think it's going to go for? And I, I didn't, I, at that point, I didn't care. Believe it or not, I didn't. I was just committed to selling it. B- bidding started at 3500 I had a shot at that, that was, point. Yeah. I think there were quite a few people uh, at start. That was my thing is like the car changed hands every time it was 3500 bucks. And, you know, uh, Lee Brown, <clears throat> the guy that built the car for the movie, couldn't give it away. He, he asked Warner Brothers to give him a dollar and just to just change hands, let's get it gone, whatever. And the way it shook out that, you know, there was just one nut job at Warner Brothers that wanted to buy the car and thank God he did. And he mm-hmm. documented the heck out of it. Um, but he sold it for $3,500 and then Frank, the second owner, sold it to my dad for $3,500. So that was how I wanted to kick it out. Um, it was, you know, started off at 3500 and everybody's hand in the room went up. Yeah. That's, that's what I, it did. That's what I wanted. It did. I, I had ready. I, I had actually pre-authorization from my wife yeah. to put 3500 into it. Yeah. So. The so. funny thing is, though, that Dana is the only person that turned around and started screaming at me. <laughs> Dana Meekum. He looked and he's like, what? <laughs> it, that was, uh, I don't think he knew that I was going to do that. Yeah, okay. But, um, okay. yeah, it worked out. He, he uh. I really wish it would have gotten a three-five, just for the for the numbers side for, of things. For the numbers, but, yes, and and we know the the, the ten miles. Yeah, the flying Mustang went to three-five, and then now three-seven. But yeah, good for him. Yeah, well, it's uh, that car's already changed hands three times. It has yeah. changed hands, but yeah. uh, you know, again, your your Mustang story that you're sharing here. I wanted to you know finish up with maybe one last thing here. Um, even though, uh, you know, this is not directly in your life, uh, what Camaro? do you, uh, yeah, uh, the, yeah, the Camaro. <laughs> uh, what do you think Mustang will mean to you ongoing? Ongoing? For, for you, yes. I think Mustang, for me, the thing I love about it is that it has skipped. I mean, you know how Camaro stopped and, you know, the Challenger and the Chargers, the Ford or the way everything is, and I look to, to John Floor to continue the V8 in Montana, and he's holding his responsibility. Yeah, I think that's good. 
everybody heard that, right? John Clore will ensure the Mustang stays V8 with a manual transmission. Thank you, John. And auto start stop will not. In 2023, yes. In two doors. Thank you. Thank you, John. That to me, I mean, honestly, the legacy of Mustang, and I mean, everybody that I've met along the way, and it's not just here, it's all over the planet. It's, it's insane, and that's the thing I love about it. There's all kinds of Mustang people. I mean, you get them all the way up and all the way down. It's just fun for me. And yep. Mustang is, whether it's, a, you know, a, an EcoBoost or whether it's a GT500, I mean, it, somebody has a Mustang that, you know, they, they, it's, it's attainable. And to be able to have a car every year that continues to, even though matter in front of Asia comes out for, for something and everybody's like oh my god I can't believe that's going to be the new car yeah and you know I mean it, it is what it is but Mustang it's part of my family um, and it always will be and I, you know even if I tried to get away with it, away from it I don't think I could yeah but I, it, it's yeah it's part of the family I mean it's I think uh when it's all said and done, all of us there at the house will have a Mustang. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I'm just so glad that you took the time to speak and share a little bit. And uh, all my Mustang Bullet owners, uh, raise your hands again and uh, raise your hands. And give Sean a big round of applause. Now, we'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it with, uh, with a couple of notes because... I want to make it, you know, sweet and savory to come up. So we are doing the bullet. Where is it, Paul? Why can't I? Okay. So Paul Rocha <clears throat> came to me a year ago, year and a half ago, about doing the bullet nationals uh, in Nashville, Tennessee this year, which is happens to be where I live. Oh, convenient. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't have to, you know, travel anymore. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we had worked it out, and... The Bullet Nationals this year will be, uh, the car show will be at my house. And Ooh. the cool thing about this is going to be, so I had actually bought uh, recently, uh, we had rented a farm behind us because my father, God bless him, bought a horse farm without a barn fence and it's on a hill. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. So we had to rent the farm behind us, and just an absolutely beautiful farm, and, and it's been around forever. It's got a log cabin on it, but it's got these uh, beautiful fields and everything. And last year, uh, I was fortunate enough to purchase it, and Bullet was the one able to do that. So talking to Paul with Bullet being able to provide the land, that's where we're going to have the show. Wow, so phenomenal. I figured that that was kind of just a almost a bittersweet kind of thing, but it's going to be fun. It is flat. It is nice. Um, and, uh, you know, Nashville is a, uh, is a great place to visit. Don't move there. Because um, <laughs> we're, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so no Don't need any more. Okay. Anymore. All right. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's big. And then also I'll have uh, Ken Horseman, who's the guy who's directing the documentary. Believe it or not, it is still rolling quite big. Um, we have uh, a lot of good things happening with that. Uh, a lot of uh, good narrators that are in it that I can't talk about that side of it, but it will be out. It'll be out sooner than later. Um, the, uh, uh, it'll be worth the wait, but it will be a five-part series, and it's going to pretty much squash every you know, bullet question there ever was about the movie um it digs into a little bit of everything that's awesome um, yeah, yeah. Um, but the documentary is full going it's great and it, it's it's going to be um it's going to be one of those things that's a lot bigger than i thought there's a lot of a actors that are in it now wow um it's gotten a lot larger uh we are uh working hopefully to coincide with a couple other bullet things that are happening in Hollywood currently. Uh, so when that's all said and done, it'll be worth the wait. There's no doubt about that. That's cool. That's cool. Well, again, uh, again, where's all my Mustang bullet owners? Raise your hands again. 
All right, I want to give a big shout out to all of them uh, for being here. I want to give a shout out to everyone for being here. I want to thank Karen and Lauren, of course, for what they do for the Gail Halderman Museum. I want to thank Gail for what he's done for us 